All you gotta do is have a time machine and all the plot holes will be fixed. What's up, Raging Nation? How's it going? This is Alex, you, and you're watching The Road to TF5. This is Web Series where Tablo Transforms last night. This is episode number 167. And before I begin this episode, I just want to say happy birthday to Brandon Carino Gonzalez. Happy birthday to you. Hope you have a good one. Thank you for being part of the Raging Nation. Now, in this episode, we're going to talk about Bumblebee and the Autobots in history because that is essentially a theme of Transformers last night. It suggests that the Transformers have been around for a very long time, as far as we can remember. As a matter of fact, further and beyond, on what we can remember some of the humans know about them but most of them don't and they've just been hiding around in plain sight if you look at any of the taglines for the marketing it reads things like rethink the history or every legend hides a secret or they have been here forever and that is the direction for the marketing because if you checked out the brand new poster for Transformers last night it showed us a Cybertronian knight fighting alongside knights during medieval times. And it looks awesome. I love this poster so much. And following the release of that poster, there was a brand new TV spot titled Secret Past. And in that TV spot, it showed us images and paintings and photographs, newspaper clippings of Transformers that existed for a very long time. And they existed with humans they work together with the humans and a lot of those images seen are actually images that also were shown in that rethink the past or rethink the history um a clip that was shown like a few weeks ago but at the end of that that tv spot it showed us something really really cool and that is an autobot that fought with the american soldiers during world war ii this vehicle rose up to the um to a nazi headquarters and which I thought was a Volkswagen, but actually it's a Mercedes. It is a Mercedes, as it was mentioned in the YouTube comments. And then once it rolls up, it transforms and starts shooting up the headquarters. And I was just thinking, could that be Bumblebee? That's Bumblebee. That's got to be Bumblebee. Because uh, we've seen uh, this image right here where Bumblebee has existed in uh, during World War II times. And then he's got a... Um, a um, like an alt mode that reflects that time period. So I was just thinking, that's got to be Bumblebee. But then there was a number of people that doubted that was Bumblebee. They were thinking that that couldn't possibly be Bumblebee. That makes no sense. Um, you know, that would mess up the continuity of the previous films. Well, you are entirely wrong. <laughs> and I'm right. Because check this out. This is the poster that was released this morning. That's Bumblebee right there. That's Blenheim Palace. Those are the flames that he caused from all the explosions and shooting up the place. And those are allied forces. Allied American forces that are fighting alongside Bumblebee. Or rather Bumblebee's fighting alongside the Americans. And every legend hides a secret. So there you have it. So for those that agreed with me that that was Bumblebee. Woohoo! And for those that said that was not Bumblebee. <laughs> Anyways, so that's Bumblebee right there. And I was just thinking, I mean, look at the parts on this Cybertronian and look at the head. The dead giveaway is that head and that head shape definitely looks like Bumblebee. So there he is. And he carries those guns that are there right on the poster. So that is confirmed to be Bumblebee. All right. So I would like to read this tweet from Winston Reeves and he says do you think Bumblebee will have his voice back during World War II he may or he may not have his voice back we just don't know when Megatron actually ripped out his voice box we don't know when that happened it could have been between the events of World War II and the 2007 movie or it could be before uh, the events of World War II like way before so we really don't know but there could be a chance that Bumblebee might get his voice back because Mark Ryan, who voiced Bumblebee in the previous trans in the original Transformers film, he posted a, a an image or rather the poster of that Bumblebee uh, at Blenheim Palace. That's the um, you know the the, the poster that re was released this morning. But he also did post the Cybertronian Night poster, so I guess it doesn't really mean anything, but we do know that Mark Ryan did voice Bumblebee in the original 2007 Transformers film. So, 
he might get his voice back, he might not. It really depends on the writers and how Bumblebee, uh, or rather the events of the timeline. So we really don't know. Anyways, also today, what was released was a couple of images that um, show Transformers existing during history. Now we've seen this sort of thing before in a video clip, the Rethink the Past video clip, but Transformers Twitter account, the Transformers official Twitter account has released a couple of new images, new sharp and HD images, which show some really cool imagery, such as Ironhide working alongside these soldiers. I'm not sure when that is, but um, it looks like an older time period. I'm talking about before World War II. The crazy part is that he still has um, GMC top kick parts. So explain that one to me. <laughs> and then another image here is, now this is a little bit more appropriate. This is in black and white explosions going off, but Bulldog is right there uh, with a couple of uh, tanks beside him. He's, he's uh, standing in between two tanks and there he is and it looks like he's fighting a battle. And so that is that is more appropriate because that's a Cybertronian that didn't exist during um, modern times. That's a Cybertronian or rather an Autobot that existed during World War II times. Um, but of course we know that we're going to see him in Transformers last night. Um, and then there's a couple of familiar images such as Hound who is with these, uh, these soldiers during, I guess this is colonial times, I really don't know. Like I said, I failed, I almost failed history. <laughs> but there he is with the uh, Oshkosh tactical defense vehicle parts. So um, like, I really don't know how they're gonna explain that. Time travel is obviously an option or just, um, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that the, that's the only explanation, time travel. Um, and you know, if that image looks familiar, obviously it's because in that TV spot, we got to see it framed in, um, in, I guess, uh, Sir Edmund Burton's little museum, I guess, or his archived um, uh, space in his house, in his castle. Um, and it's also familiar because in the Rethink Your History um, uh, uh, a clip, it shows, that, um, it shows that image right here behind every battle. All right, so uh, here's another image that was um, tweeted by the Transformers official uh, Twitter. And it shows a Megatron here, and I'm just gonna read you what it says at the bottom. A view of Krakatoa during the earlier stage of eruption from a photograph taken on Sunday, the 27th, May, 1883. So this is the late 1800s, and Megatron is standing right there in his, um, I guess his knight robot mode, like his knight form, and he's standing right by an, an, ex, an, ex, an erupted um, a volcano, and the only thing I can think of is energon like harvesting energon from from the earth because that's what they did in g1 they took like natural energy sources such as volcanoes or um natural gas uh, like that came from the ground and they used that as energon and I, that's the only reason why i could think that he's standing by uh, by a volcano and um you know this is totally like just me daydreaming but uh the cloud on the left like that clouds on the left kind of looks like a face, but that probably doesn't mean anything. Anyways, this this uh, painting uh, was shown also once again in the secret past um, TV spot. There it is right there. And following that, uh, it all, the Transformers official Twitter page also tweeted uh, a sharp image of this painting right here. And that is Cybertronian Knights slaughtering these these um i guess barbarians or these warlords on horses and it's a massacre it's a bloody massacre just dismemberment their beheadings and this painting was also featured once again in the secret past tv spot so you know uh, there's some people out there or rather the same people that doubted that it was bumblebee were also the same people that said that you know what these images that you saw is probably just marketing in fact, it is just marketing. Just because, just because they 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 put it online for marketing doesn't mean it's actually going to end up in the movie. Well, you're entirely wrong because it is in the movie. It is in the movie in these paintings. So there you have it. <laughs> I mean, like 
you know, they wouldn't go through all that trouble, you know, painting these images or drawings of Megatron and, uh, and these knights and also creating all this amazing imagery with Bulldog and Ironhide if it weren't actually in the movie. I'm not saying that it's going to be a full-blown scene of it of them in the movie but the paintings are actually in the movie I mean why on earth would they make up an entire like a museum filled with these archival images if it's not gonna be in the movie I mean this is a major major set dressing I mean they decked out this entire museum looking place with all these images and photographs and newspaper clippings and they made it for the movie not just for some marketing piece if it was just a marketing piece it would look like this where it is only one CG asset and that is Optimus Prime not that hard to do I mean it's hard to do but it's not that hard to do because all they got to do is plop them right there same thing with this Schick Hydro commercial which is a product tie-in video and all they got to do was just put Optimus Prime in there add in a little bit of practical effects but at the end of the day that didn't take as much work as this right here where they have to you know they have to decorate this thing and you know they are also in, uh, that involves a lot of people such as like the you know the props masters and art department and and people who are who are um, involved with creating this entire set so this is for the movie okay anyways uh, we've seen all those uh, we've seen those images before uh, from this uh, this wall here because there's bumblebee there's uh, there's that um, this plane that we don't know who it is and also uh, there's a uh, um, hound in that propaganda poster as well as drift so there you have it <laughs> and then there's also bulldog there's that you know behind every victory there's that painting right there of Bulldog. So all this, all these images that we saw from Rethink Your History is actually in the movie, all right? So which leads me to talk about this tweet from Jake with the They Have Been Here Forever poster. How would you explain the continuity problems of the Transformers 2007 and last night? Who said there are actually continuity problems? Have you seen Transformers last night? I haven't seen it yet. And as far as I know, there are no continuity problems, but there's a lot of confusion. I believe that 14 writers there are there to fix those continuity, pro continuity problems that you claim there are. It is only that when we watched Transformers last night, it is only then when we can say that there are continuity problems. But before we've watched it, since we have not watched it, there's only confusion. No continuity problems because you have to watch it first. So I think that the writers have taken care of it. It's not something I'm gonna question until I've watched the movie. Because you can assume all you want, but at the end of the day, we haven't seen the movie yet. It's like saying that, oh, the, you know, this movie is gonna suck because they're gonna mess up all the, all the stuff that has happened in the past. Well, you don't know how they're gonna fix that. They might actually have a time machine and that actually fixes everything. All you gotta do is have a time machine and all the plot holes will be fixed and then it will create all new plot holes. But at the end of it all, Transformer, or rather the events of Transformers last night will be a brand new starting ground for 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 everything from that point on so uh there you have it anyways so there was the release of the bumblebee poster where it says uh every legend hides a secret and then there was and before that there was the release of this cybertronian night poster which says they have been here forever now what's next with the marketing well i'm sure that there are going to be more posters that carry this exact same theme and i'm looking forward to it it could even be released tomorrow but at the end of it all we know that there's one more major piece of marketing and that is the final trailer when is the final trailer coming out well i don't know it could be the end of may or maybe even early june i'm thinking in a couple of weeks we're gonna get a brand new trailer that is Two minutes and eight, uh, sorry, two minutes and 18 seconds long because this one called Secret Past is probably Trailer H where it says it's one minute and one seconds long. I think that's the one. So we've seen that already, whatever, like they're calling it Trailer H, but now there's also um, this one right here. Two minutes, 18 seconds. That's potentially the final trailer which we're gonna get in two weeks. Anyways, I wanna give shout outs 
And uh, the shout out goes out to Allergy Cheese for bringing this to my attention, Atlantis Arise. The film has many references to this episode. I started watching the G1 and I see many things that Michael Bay was inspired to make the movies. So you know how there's this uh, Cybertronian ship that's rising onto the surface where Optimus fights Bumblebee and also Cybertronian Knights? That's most likely inspired by this episode, Atlantis Arise from G1. Because look at it. This is coming from the water... Uh, Optimus Prime is standing right there, and the writers, all 14 of them, have watched those G1 episodes to get inspiration. So they're taking little bits of information from all types of Transformers lore, as lore especially G1. Okay? And finally, last shout out goes out to RetisentBlue89 on Twitter, and he says, I made this for art class, and it's an Autobot logo with a little bit of like uh, abstract-ness on it, and it looks really cool. I like what you've done here. Uh, I like the fact that uh, it's a combination of fandom with the Autobot logo and also um, expressive art with what's going on around it. So great job, very, very creative. Uh, thank you so much for sharing that with me. I really appreciate it, and there you have it. I'm looking forward to the next piece of marketing, whether it be a poster or a brand new TV spot, but uh, I'm actually looking forward to the who they're putting in next for this theme of character posters. We got a Cybertronian Knight first, and then we got Bumblebee. Who do you think is next? Let me know in the comments section below, and I'm really, really excited for this film. I'm getting more and more excited as we get closer, and of course, there's going to be way more episodes, so stay tuned for that. Um... Yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh yeah, by the way, I almost forgot. Completely, like, just, boo! Um, this is, um, this is uh, some fan mail that I received from Ms. Betty McGuire. And um, why do I have fan mail? It's because um, I have a P.O. box. I have a P.O. box, and I've had it for a while. I've had it for a number of years, and I've been opening up my fan mail on video, but then I stopped. The reason why is because I ended up getting too much fan mail to the point where I couldn't keep up with it. Um, and uh, so that's why I stopped, because I just didn't have the time to open them all up on camera. But uh, I, I do have my P.O. box uh, um, somewhere. If you know where it is, then you can send me some fan mail. But for the time being, I'm not going to publicly advertise it just because I um, I, I really don't want to be bombarded with a whole bunch of fan mail. I mean, what a problem to have. <laughs> but anyways, uh, I'm just going to open this up and I'm going to show my appreciation uh, for um, for the sender of this, this, um, this, this fan mail. And uh, ooh... This is cool. Oh my god, wow. Uh, let me just uh, see if there's anything else. Nope, that's it. Okay, let me just read the uh, read what it says here. Dear Alex, I would like to thank you for taking us through this journey to TF5. I'm such a huge fan that this picture is a token of my appreciation. Thanks for the journey. I can't wait to see the last night. Thanks, Andre Daniels. Oh, thank you, Andre. Check this out. Wow. This is an Autobot logo with the five in it to symbolize Transformers 5 and this is beautiful. Wow, this is great. You're really talented, Andre, and this deserves to be put up on the wall. I mean, this is this is this is fantastic. Wow. I, I love it. I love it. Thank you so much, Andre. Anyways, uh thank you so much everybody for watching and as for the PO box situation, uh, I'll have something uh, announced in the future on how I'm going to be, uh, what I'm going to be doing with um, with uh, fan mail because that's something that I've, I've, I want to do on video but I really can't do all of it on video. So we're going to find a way to do it and I'm going to make a big announcement for it later on, uh, later on uh, like in a couple of uh, videos down the road. But uh, I will welcome, up, welcome it if you know what my P.O. Box is. It's somewhere there in social media, but I'm not publicly advertising it just because I don't want, like, suddenly all this fan mail to just, like... <sighs> Anyways, <laughs> that's all I gotta say in this episode. As always, um, if you enjoyed it, hit the like button, subscribe to YouTube channel, like me on Facebook, The Rage Nation. Also, follow me on Twitter, Rage Nation. My name is Alexi. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace. Do there at the last minute. I think Michael Bay added, added, wanted to add that in just for comics, comic relief. Um, and then we get our first introduction.